Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Uh, if you haven't watched this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an elder law attorney. My day job is doing elder law at, at uh, Myrick O'Connell. Uh, with our offices are in Westboro and Worcester and Boston, and we're a big firm. But this is not about um, my day job. It's really about Frank and Mary. If you've been to one of my many presentations at the Senior Center, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's um, if that's Hudson, that means you want to stay right here. You don't want to go far away. And so the point of this show is to let you know the people that you need to know and the programs that you need to know about uh, in order to stay right here in Hudson for the rest of your life. So Janice Long has often helped me on these shows by recommending wonderful guests. And today she recommended Alex O'Hare, who is here with us. And thank you very much, Alex for being willing to come on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. And Alex's official um, name is as the, the town social, basically the town social worker, although she, she works out of the Board of Health and, and just provides a variety of services. And Alex is here to talk about those. She provides them in a lot of different contexts, but specifically um, spends quite a bit of time, she was telling me, at the Senior Center. So Alice, can you start off by just telling us kind of like, you know, how did, who, who are you? Are you from Hudson? Are you from, not from Hudson? Are you, how long have you been doing this? Kind of what's your background? And, yeah. and how long have you been doing this now? Yeah, so I, I was raised in Hudson. So I grew up in Hudson. So I'm very familiar with the town. That's why when this position came up, I was very passionate about coming back to Hudson. But right now I live in Lancaster. I would mm -hmm. love to live in Hudson if I could afford it. Um, well, you know, Hudson's just getting to be such a hot town, you know? It is, it is. Everybody's getting priced out of, who would have thunk it? Everybody's getting priced out of Hudson. Right? Yeah, even, even Main Street, they beat out Vegas Main Street. So it's yeah. definitely a booming <laughs> town. And I would, I would love to come back and live here, but can't afford it. Um, but my background, uh, so I went to undergrad, I went to, I got my BSW, my Bachelor in Social Work um, at Regis College, and then I went on to graduate school in Boston to Wheelock College. And actually during my undergrad, I was actually the uh, Senior Center intern when I was going through wow. my college. So that's where I originally met Janice and we ran this friendly chat program that was really great for homebound seniors um, that really didn't want people in their homes. So working with Holly and Anna over there and Janice of the people that was, and that was back like five years ago when I was going through my undergrad. Yeah. So I, I graduated from uh, my graduate program and I worked at a nursing home for some time. I worked for Advocate, which is a nonprofit organization for mental health. And then I found that the position came up for a town. Janice told me about it and I'm very passionate. Everyone's so friendly here at the town of Hudson. I grew up here, so it still will always be a part of me. And so I, I, I took the opportunity, and so I've been here since September, and I, I, I love it so far. That's great. That's great. So so, so t tell us about kind of what you do and, and kind of for, if you could start off with kind of what you do in general and then talk a little bit about what you do specifically as it relate to Frank and Mary or to Frank and Mary and their kids and Frank and Mary and all the different situations that they may be finding themselves in, especially given... I, you know, you've been here for an amazing time during this kind of ex extremely high stress COVID time. And that stress seems to be dissipating finally, but we'll see, you know. Yeah, ho hopefully. About, yeah, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so overall, I really help people get connected to resources and I help with like the referral process as well. So that can stem from housing applications, some mental health referrals, even assistance with like mass health application, navigating the health connect connector, um, making sure that people can be set up with doctors, 
financial assistance as well if people are more food insecure, um, resources for like the food pantry. I'm also the leader for now. I took over for Callie. Um, she was the one that was running it through the Hudson Health Department, but I took over. We run a Hudson Mobile Food Pantry yeah. for a month too for people that are in need of more food, which I have found has been a major barrier. And me and Janice, we have also been working on running some groups over at the senior center as well. So uh, we ran a couple of groups. It was a holiday blues group, and we're going to be running a winter's blue uh, blues group um, actually the this following Thursday. So uh, for people that do have the a seasonal like affective disorder that suffers from depression, anxiety, more around the holidays when we're not getting enough sun, um, yeah. the people are able to come he, come to the senior center, sign up, and I would be able to give like, them clinical consultation as well. People are able to make one-on-one -on -one appointments with me until they are set up with a therapist because we are in a mental health crisis right now. And the wait time can be up to 12 weeks, unfortunately. So I, I hold a license. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, so I'm able to provide that clinical consultation to our residents as well. That's a, that's a tremendous variety of services. Can, can you can you talk about you know from from your perspective because you've really been on the ground. You know why what has happened in terms of this just not being able to find mental health professionals. So I, I, part of it is because of, I believe, the pandemic. Um, most people, when the pandemic started, are more isolated. They're not seeing their family as often. So definitely an increase of depression. Um, we, we tend, when we do isolate in our homes, like, our, like the increase of depression and anxiety increases. Um, that's a big part of it. So a lot of people are needing therapy now. Another part of it is there's just a lot of turnover in the mental health field as well. So some therapists are leaving, new therapists are coming in. And uh, another part of it too is like someone could be looking for a specific therapist. They want a therapist that are older than 45 that are like, we have a large Portuguese speaking um, population oh, in yeah. Hudson too. So in need of a Portuguese speaking therapist. So there's a lot of factors why we are in that mental health crisis, but I think that there's just a, such a high need of therapy right now, just due to the pandemic and how it's affected our like population's mental health overall. So, so when you, when, when, is, is it part of your role to actually help people kind of find who would be an appropriate counselor, counseling person for them to be talking to? Yeah, so I work with the family. I so I any resident through Hudson I help. So parents, kids, older adults. Um, so I work with the families and see what they're looking for. And it's like an intake process with me. I see what they want, what they're looking for. And then when I put that referral in for advocates or other local agencies, um, I can put that information in so they are linked to the right therapist because a therapist is just like a relationship. You have to have a right. connection with that therapist. Um, so you want to have a, have a good, good fit. And, and, and that must be a real challenge, just trying to pair folks up. Like as, as you had mentioned, the, no, the notion of my, you know, feeling really stressed out or anxious or whatever, as a result of the pandemic or whatever I'm going through, and, and I, I may not really relate to a person who's like 40 years old, you know? Right, exactly. So that's like part of it. Like if people like, there's some people that come to me and they say, oh, it doesn't, doesn't really matter to me. Or but someone's like, can come to me, hey, I want someone that's female, over 50 years old, um, that's Portuguese speaking. So it's, it's, it's hard when it comes to those like specifics. Yeah, yeah, that's got to be a challenge. And and are, are a lot. So if when you're doing that kind of intake and then connecting people, are most of the of the 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 counseling sessions now or the therapy sessions all done by Zoom or or is any of this happening in in clinicians' offices or happening at people's homes? How, like how does all how does all of that work? 
So um, they are doing in person now. In the beginning of the pandemic, when everything was shut down, they were only doing Zoom. But now they're leaving the choice up to the client, whether they want inpatient or um, over Zoom. They, um, depending on the agency, most agencies aren't, don't, aren't doing like in-home therapy just due to COVID and the pandemic mm -hmm. still. Um, but most people do benefit more from the in-person um, visits because it's just more beneficial face-to-face -face having that therapeutic session. So most people offer the in-person, which most agencies are continuing to doing right now. I see. And, and you said that in addition to trying to connect people with those kinds of sessions, you were actually doing some actual things right at the senior center. What, what, can you describe that again? Yeah. You... So, so we're, so we're running a couple groups. Um, we're actually trying to get a uh, caregiving group together too. So originally we did a holidays blues group. So that was around like the Christmas time and like new year's for, people that have like lost loved ones and the mm -hmm. holidays are especially difficult. Attempt. So getting a group together uh, for people to like understand that you might not have the same experience, but similar experiences, being able to have that group together in that, in that space. And then we're running a winter's blues group next Thursday and that will be, and it's, kind of along the same line. It's a seasonal affective disorder that comes into play around the winter seasons because we're not getting as much sunlight. Right. And then um, the caregivers group are for caregivers that have like loved one that they're taking care of for like that carry a diagnosis of Alzheimer's or dementia or just older hospice care um, that do, do need like a break or they're feeling frustrated and it's a, it's a place where they can express how how being a caregiver how that affects their mental health and 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 onwards and, and i suppose for, for those kinds of programs that for think for for things like folks who are going who have a loved one who are who are in the last year of their life and they're trying to deal with that or for people who have a loved one who has memory problems that the, those the groups must also just be a, a wonderful. They're just kind of a way to share, kind of how to deal with particular issues, you know. Because it is, you know, as I think some someone had told me, it isn't. It isn't like this is rocket science, you know. People have been frail and and in the last year of their lives since there have been people, you know. And there are and, and there are a lot of people who have gone through working with folks with memory problems. But a lot of times it's like, unless you've done it, it's hard to understand it, right? And right. First, unless you've done it, you know, you're in the middle of it and you think, oh my God, you know, I'm, I'm all alone here. And, you know, is, is it just me? Can I, mm -hmm. I just handle this? But once you, you're in a group and you realize other people have gone through it, it just makes it a lot easier to deal with. Yeah, exactly. They feel validated and they have someone that they can talk to that really under, really understands fully, which is like what we're trying to do is to have that kind of support group for those caregivers. So so me and me and Janice are working on that. And um, hopefully we can get that up and running in the next couple of months as well. And it would be a monthly thing for, for uh, residents to come into the senior center and I will be facilitating it. And I, and I guess that, that leads to kind of a, a broader question. So you're dealing with a whole variety of issues and dealing with a whole variety of needs. It, it, do you have a particular sense of kind of like what is missing? Like if you had the resources, what, el what else would you be doing? Because you're obviously, you know, you're a, you're a, are you, are, are you kind of a one woman show there in the, in the <laughs> yeah well I have a good team like I work with Janice and Holly and Anna and I get referrals from them and there's a, I'm deaf I'm the only licensed social worker for the town um, mm -hmm. so I would be able to provide like that clinical expertise uh, so so another program that when you talk about um, what like kind of like the barriers of the resources, I feel like one of the main, one of the things that have come up when I'm talking to Janice and talking to the residents is that there's definitely a barrier, barrier in like transportation. 
because uh, we do have the senior bus that goes to Hudson and Marlboro for medical appointments. But if like, let's say a senior has a uh, appointment, like a specialist in like at Emerson Hospital or Boston, they don't really have that means for transportation. We have like U Ubers and Tommy's taxis, but that can be expensive. Right. So me, me and Janice and working with other towns of people that have like done these programs before, like a patient navigator program, being able to have volunteers, being able to bring them to these specific appointments and having an advocate there for there too. So if they forget questions or if they have more anxiety seeing the doctor, they would have an advocate with them as well. So that's another program that hopefully we get up and running um, as as we get volunteers. Jeez, I would think that would be a great idea because I think that's one of the that's one of the one of the most stressful things for for um, for anybody, but for a senior, certainly to be going to a doctor's appointment and then to kind of be there if you're there all alone, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And, and, and then you leave the office and like, what did he say again? Or, mm -hmm. you know, what did she say again? Because if, especially if you're talking about real problems that you're experiencing, you know, you're stressed out about that. And so you're not kind of really trying to focus on the conversation. So that'd be a really interesting program. Yeah, it's definitely like that's what we found as a barrier for the town. And they would like this volunteer would like call them a couple of days before. How are you feeling yep. about the appointment? Let's go over questions that we can write down beforehand. So right. like so meet like before, during the appointment and after. How do you think it went? And also having that transportation available to the resident, which would be it would be fantastic if we'll be able to do that. That's a great idea. And, and do you say, did you say that you, that you know of other communities in which that kind of service has been developed? Yeah. So we're working with, um, we got, the, we found out about other programs from a resident in town and uh, Concord uh, Senior Center um, mm -hmm. has a program similar to this. So um, going through like the training and being able to recruit volunteers, that's, that's the next step for us. I get it. I get it. So, so I guess I, I would just say, stay tuned. I would assume yes. there'll be information in the senior center, in the newsletter and stuff, you know, kind of regarding that. So I, I didn't realize that are you, are you the person that is kind of the intake person regarding things like the, you know, the fuel assistance program and other things? So Anna and Holly, um, they usually do for, for seniors. So for people that are 55 and older, since I'm the community social worker for the town, yeah. they're still like the social services advocates. So um, they do most of the fuel assistance. But if someone comes to me needing fuel assistance that are under 55 and older, I usually assist with that since like I, I'm the social worker in town. So people that are younger can come to me. I see. I see. So that so that makes a lot of sense because because it, because it, it, in the case of seniors, there's really kind of this kind of designated group of folks, right? right. They're kind of they're kind of dealing with this. So so how long have you been doing this again at this at, at, in, in Hudson? So this uh, this position started. I started back in uh, September. So ju just a few months now. Yeah. So you are, you've obviously learned a lot in a few months, right? Yes. Yes. And, and, can you, and, and, and in addition to going to the senior center, do you go to people's homes or do they need to go to you? And then, and which leads to the next question, kind of, where are you? And kind of what, what is your, what is, and by the way, we'll, you know, we'll ask the, the wonderful folks at Hudson Cable to do a, a banner that has your contact information that has your phone number and stuff, you know, and your email address. Great. Um, yeah. But, but, but how, how would people go about finding you? So I, so I'm usually at town hall on Mondays and Tuesdays. So those are the folks that are under 55 and older that want mm -hmm. to make one-on-one -on -one appointments, whether fill out applications or just need that clin clinical consultation. So people can come see me face-to-face -face if they feel more comfortable on Zoom, we can do that. I've also met people in the home, like for home visits, because I do that if uh, a concerning issue comes up with like housing or safety, I, I do that as well. Uh, so they can either find me here Mondays and Tuesdays or at the senior center on Thursdays. And then they can reach out to me um, via the, my, I have a mobile phone and I also have an office phone number too and my email address that they can reach me as well. 
and, and so now you've, you know, once again, you've been, you've been here kind of at the, at the, what I'll, what we hope is kind of the tail end of this whole pandemic experience, right? Mm -hmm. And so can you just kind of talk about your sense of how people have been feeling during the time that you're here and how, you know, what, how, how things are changing and how, what you went, how, what, and what you anticipate for changes coming up? Yeah, I, I feel like what, um, because the word is like getting out there, I'm getting more busier now that people know I'm here. Um, so people are, have expressed their gratitude and appreciation. They've been wanting a social worker for the town. We've never had a town social worker uh, for the town since uh, I don't think we've ever had one before. So wow. there's, yeah, so they're definitely like the residents of people under the uh, Hudson Health Department or the senior center, like is def definitely in need. And I feel like the main thing that I, the majority that takes up most of my time is the mental health referrals because people are really in need. And that's what they did, like, don't know where to start. Where, what therapist should I go to? I have this insurance. So, so it's definitely, a, it's very helpful me being here, helping yeah. them navigate that. Um, so that I would feel that is like the major need. So I feel like me continuing to do that for referrals, setting people up with therapists, helping up with even just like an insurance piece. Like people don't really know how to start with that either, that I feel like more people will be having providers. And I feel like the overall mental health will make, will make a difference being me being here helping them set being set up with these counselors as psychiatrists and, and can, can you can you just speak for a, a second to to the 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 issue of the of the insurance like does medicare cover uh, cover any of this if is suppose yes. suppose because you know, i didn't know that, mm -hmm. didn't know that. yeah talk about that a little bit yeah obviously so that's a you know Frank and Mary, one of the Frank and Mary's biggest concerns is they don't want to run out of money before they die. You know, right. they're, 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 I mean, they don't want to get just so depressed about paying for, for the, for the service that they, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that ends up making them sick. So talk, yeah. to, talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I think, and that's why like, it's good that they, like, I, I'm here being able to assist with that. And like the senior center also helps with the insurance piece too. And once they are set up with like the insurance that is is well suited for their finances, whether it's Mass Health, Medicare, yeah. I go and I do my part and I find the agency or the therapist that will take that insurance so they don't have to pay out of pocket because that's not what I I don't want to set them up with like a like a private like private um like agency therapists, will they be have like a large copay? I want them to be able to find a therapist and mo and advocates is a great organization that takes most insurances. So that's usually my referral process is I refer out to advocates and I do that intake process with them. I get it. I get it. And, 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 and you refer to, to advocates regarding both seniors and folks who are, who yep. are younger. Yep. Yep. So they do all, they have therapy, psych, like psychiatry too. So whatever they're looking for, if they need med assistance as well, advocates will right. be able to help with that. Right. Right. So, but, and that, and that, that makes me think it may be interesting to have a follow-up show to maybe bring some folks in from advocates or from one of these folks, one of these places, just to kind of talk through those, those kinds of services that they provide. Cause I think that a lot of people simply aren't going to be aren't going to be as aware of all of that. Right? Yes, yes. Um, Advocates is a great organization. They have a couple clinics. Their main office is in Framingham, but they have a clinic in Marlboro, Harvard. So depending what, like when, because uh, I'm dealing with um, residents that are, are from Hudson, I usually right. refer them to the Marlboro Clinic, which is right on Maple Street. And it's, it's, it's very convenient. And um, I've, I've had great experience with Advocates. I get it. So, so I guess, so folks, to the, for the folks who are watching, you know, so if, if you are, if you've survived, you know, and you survived the pandemic and you're still standing and that's great, you know, but you're just feeling like, boy, that was just a terrible couple of years. And, and if you're feeling, especially if you're feeling like that, that it's really taken a toll on you, if you're feeling, you know, as are a lot of folks like a lot more anxious or just a lot more depressed, 
I think you may want to consider talking to Alex and see if through Alex um, you can you can perhaps get somebody to talk to. Ideally, not a family member because they're the, probably the people you've been fighting about <laughs> or over the last few years because you were feeling so crummy. You know, some other person who can, among other things, you know, just tell you that you're not crazy. You know, and tell you that you know a lot of people have gone through this and stuff, and then look help you look for somebody a professional you know people who some someone like alex who is you know who is who has really spent her, spent you know time and e educational time trying to help understand how they can help you how they can help you and cuz i think that's the whole point you know now you have the benefit of living in hudson you have your own social worker how good is that you know it's like it 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 goes with the rail trail you know it's you're getting Hudson's getting better and better. So, so uh, Alex, I really, really appreciate you're taking the time to do this. I know that I mean, it is clear from what you've described that you have a busy day. Um, and so thanks for taking some time out, off of the, out of this busy day. And, and folks, you know, so now you know who Alex is. So this isn't like a nameless bureaucratic face that you're calling, right? So, yeah. you know, if you, if you think that Alice can be of help, she is there to help you. These are your tax dollars at work. So, so th you know, think about whether she can be of assistance. So Alex, thanks a million. Yes, really thank you. And I wanted to remind everyone Winter Blues next Thursday. If anyone wants to sign up, just call the Senior Center. And what's the, what's the, so that's, that's Thursday, the 16th, 17th, like the 24th? It is the 24th and it's from right. 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. at the Senior Center. So just that's call the Senior Center to sign up. That's great. Thanks again, Alex. Thanks Thank to the you. folks at Hudson Cable for doing this. Uh, and we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Thank you.